everyone. Today we are going to discuss enums or enumerations in Python. To understand enums, let's take a situation where uh, you have a set of items and you want us, you want to uh, select one of the items uh, uh, from the set and use it as an input to uh, some functions in your code. And that set could be it could be something like a set of uh, or uh, it could be a list of subjects we have in our uh, like let's say course. Uh, or if it can be a set of colors or movies and so on. This is basically a set of items which are uh, which are defined at the beginning of uh, your project, for example, right? And now uh, let's say you are given this uh, given the data like this. Uh, it says subjects, so these many subjects. And now you have to use these items to uh, let's say to compute some some sort of um, uh, some, to compute something in your code base. Uh, for example, just take uh, this example where you have a student object and uh, you have a function called get score and the score takes a subject and the student um, student uh, instance and gives you some score. Now we can ask the question: How are we going to call uh, get scores if you have the data like this? So what I have to do is I have to use this uh, subjects tuple and then compute the score. So as you know, uh, tuples are um, tuples are immutable and we can iterate through the tuples and we can also use static indexing, um, um, uh, static indexing, just like uh, list in tuples. So if I can simply say, okay, uh, students subjects of zero refers to maths, one refers to comp sci, two uh, refers to electrical and so on. And we might try to uh, uh, write the code like this, for example, um, get the score by calling get score and pass in subjects zero. This is uh, this is a bit uh, difficult to remember all the time because we have to always correlate zero to maths, one to comp sci. This will become a nightmare um, slowly, and this is also a source of bug uh, because you might by mistake uh, provide some different value, and uh, if it is out of range, then it will get error. So all of these problems are going to happen. So this is not really a good uh, way of implementing um, or a good way of using this uh, subject set or uh, subject. Um, um, uh, tuple in our code. So we have to have another uh, better way uh, uh, to uh, communicate this information in the code or to use this information in our code. So what we can do is we can, uh, a second, uh, as a second step or a second idea, we can use uh, something like uh, aliases to uh, deal with this. So we'll no more use these subjects and uh, we'll use these aliases for each of these subject. Uh, like for example, maths variable refers to this math string, comsci refers to comsci and so on. Now these are just uh, the variable names and uh, now I can uh, use something like, okay, I want to provide the subject maths and uh, let's say I uh, use a student. I call the student and uh, this is an instance of the student and this is how I compute my score now. This looks little better, right? So as you can see, we have, um, we, have we are providing uh, the, the subjects as variables and this is, a little easy to read and a little easy to uh, like remember uh, uh, because because we have these aliases. But again, this is not perfect because uh, tomorrow somebody might uh, while they're using the code or while calling the function, they might provide something like um, chem for chemistry uh, because they see that uh, the function get score takes a subject string or uh, uh, yeah subject variable which is a string and they might think uh, okay it's a subject and uh, we might have this chemistry subject so let's provide that and this is going to throw an error because we don't have. Uh, we have not implemented uh, our code or we have not, we don't have, uh, we can't accommodate the subject chem chemistry here because we don't have them as the, uh, we don't have them in the list or in the tuple, right? So this is again a source of bug and uh, by accident people might make mistakes, right? So this is again not a perfect way uh, to uh, implement uh, this. Now, the better way is uh, using enums. This That is basically the topic uh, in our uh, discussion here. So we have to use enum to uh, communicate this information or communicate to the developer that you have to use these specific values or these specific values and they are restricted. You can't use any other value in your code. So when you have this type of situation where you want to put restrictions on set of values, only the user or the developer can use uh, or very specific values that the developer can use, then enums are the best way. So let's see how we can use enums to achieve this. So I'm going to get rid of all of this code and I'm going to just add or import enum um, which is enum from uh, enum package and then I can create a class and inherit the properties uh, from enum parent uh, class and then in the body of the class which basically looks like a class variable uh, uh, in like like uh, class variables um, in the in the class um, um, uh, uh, definition here uh, this uh, maths uh, refers to this math string similar to like what we had in the aliases before right now, the amazing thing is we can access all of these 
all of this using a simple um, um, using this subject instance. Like for example, I can access maths uh, string by running this. For example, if I run, it shows maths. And if I want to get, uh, since as you know, enums are like enumerations are uh, we can iterate through them. We can get all of the all the items we have in our uh, in our enumerations. Uh, for example, all the values like maths, comps, all of them we can print them out here. As you can see, right? So this is uh, something really nice. And as you, as you know, if I if I try to, for example, try to access something like uh, chemistry or try to print, uh, okay, for example, I don't want maths, and so by mistake, if somebody tries to access chem, it's going to throw an error because this attribute does not exist in this uh, subject's enumerations. So this is going to throw an error. So this is really cool because this is what we want to do. Like I said, we have to put every uh, we have to put restrictions on the items or the values the user can or the developer can use, and uh, anything else should uh, throw an error. Because it's it's a, it's going to be a bug if if something can run even with some uh, values which are not um, not uh, useful or not uh, defined. So this is this is the power of um, enumerations, right? And enumerations, the enum package provides a lot of uh, features. We'll understand uh, what these features are uh, one by one and uh, see how we can use them in our uh, project. So uh, like I said, uh, we have multiple. Um, um, features, ma many features in enums, and uh, first one we can discuss is auto. Uh, as you can see here, I can import auto from uh, from enum, and what auto does is uh, let before going to uh, like before going and understanding what auto does, let me change the code here. So as you can see here, I have uh, I have defined this enumeration again subjects, and I am providing auto uh, to every uh, variable here. So what is going to do is this is the i mean auto we can use uh, in a situation where we don't really care about the value uh, these uh, uh, these uh, variables hold so that means um, we are just let's say interested only in the variables uh, names but we don't really care about the value so in those situations auto is very use, very much useful what it's going to do is when you mention auto it is monotonically going to assign values like uh, values from one to the length of uh, like, like to length means like a number of uh, items in this uh, subjects uh, like for example math gets one comes gets two and so on Right, so this is just assigned uh, automatically by by um, enum. Uh, so that is why we uh, like, for example, if I try to print subjects here, or if I try to print a list of subjects, uh, it's going to show um, uh, it's going to show something like this. So math gets one, comes gets two, and so on. So, but there is another um, feature uh, which is uh, basically uh, we there is a function called generate next value. Which you can just overload uh, using um, you know, overload in this uh, class definition, um, which is basically going to which basically going to take these these names and we can do some sort of um, some kind of operations on these names and those can be overwritten. So this auto, uh, I mean uh, I mean it's kind of contradictory because I said if you use auto you don't want to use those values because they are just assigned randomly, not really randomly like in sequence. Uh, that means we are not really interested in the values. Uh, but still, I'm saying uh, we can use this function to overload these uh, the values, right? Uh, it's kind of contradictory, but let's say something like this. It's I mean, so this is allowed. So if I do this, uh, as, as you can see here, it's going to capitalize the um, these words, and uh, it's going to be assigned as the values for these uh, variables, as you can see. So this is exactly what we did previously. We kind of wrote all of those in uh, all of those manually, like math string and so on. But we can actually generate those variables uh, using this uh, this function. So this is another uh, cool thing about um, uh, auto and uh, enums. So now let's understand the second um, feature, which is called flag. So you can import flag from enum. And uh, let me just get rid of this uh, generate next value function. Now, uh, flag is basically uh, it's very much useful when you want to uh, do some kind of bitwise operation like and or or uh, on these um, values. So uh, for example, I can. Um, I can print. I can print subjects electrical uh, or subjects telecom, right? Uh, if I run this, I'm going to get an error because I'm using enum uh, as a parent class. But all I have to do is to fix this: is uh, use flag as a parent. Uh, so if I run this, it works. So as you can see, I can create bitwise operator using flag. That is the second feature. And last but not least, we have a unique feature. This is very interesting. So imagine uh, a case where you have uh, the subjects enumerations like this. So, um, so, and like I said, uh, unique is is something which is going to be very useful. And let's say we can import unique from uh, enums like this. And uh, like I said, we have a class here or uh, enum enumeration here. And if if you see the the maths um, variable, it holds the string maths. And there is another variable called mathematics that also holds maths. So that means we have a duplicate values, but uh, 
uh, the keys or the, the, the names of those, uh, the attribute names are different, but the value they hold is exactly uh, same, as you can see here. This may be useful in some cases. Uh, for example, if, if you want to provide this type of feature uh, to your uh, users, uh, because some people might say maths, okay, maths is mathematics, and some people might want to refer mathematics as mathematics. Uh, but both of them should be referring to the same value, like maths here, maths string here. So in those type of scenarios, this is allowed because Python allows you to, um, uh, not Python, the enum allows you to uh, do these type of things. So for example, if I run this, it runs without any problems. But there can be other um, cases where you want to restrict this. So you don't want to have uh, enumeration where um, different variables holds the same values, right? So that that is, let's say, strictly not allowed in your use case, for example. So how are you going to deal with that? Uh, you can use this uh, unique and provide it as a decorator on top of the a class, this is basically a class decorator. And if you do this, and now if I try to run the code, it's going to throw an error because this is, like I said, if you use unique decorator, it's going to check, the, the unique decorator is going to check if there are multiple variables holding the same value or not. If it is true, then it's going to throw an error like this. As you can see, a value error duplicate value is found in the subjects, mathematics and maths. So once you see this error, uh, one, I mean, you can, what you can, all you can do is you can just go and delete one of them. Let's say I'm deleting the, uh, the last one. And now if I run, it works because we don't have any variable which holds uh, variables which are holding the same uh, values multiple times. So uh, this is all about um, enumerations or enums. And like I said, uh, enums are really, really useful if you want to, um, if you, like I said, if you want to have set of um, set of values and you want to use them in your code and if they are predefined definitely go for it or if you have a system where you want to choose um, uh, from a set of values you should definitely go for uh, enumerations uh, i mean there can be other uh, things you, you you might want to do but depends depending on um, the situation you can use uh, enums and there is another thing called int enum and int flag uh, which are not really that useful that that's why i didn't cover in this um, in this class so uh, hopefully uh, this is uh, helpful for you guys and uh, if you like the video, give a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you guys in the uh, next video. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening.